what's going on all you wonderful late plusers out there it is i Stuart here once again to give you guys another common rider saber review this time of course i'm going to be talking about episode number 44 the penultimate episode for this season i believe uh it was definitely the big calm before the storm i mean there was definitely some action in this episode at the very beginning but other than that it was definitely a very character focused episode which you know that i think the show does a pretty decent job of for the most part so i'm really excited to break this episode down talk about it with you guys and of course you know get really hyped for that season finale coming soon it's really cool we got a lot kind of coming when it comes to common rider saber because not only do we have a uh, epic season finale to look forward to uh next week but we also have the big crossover movie between uh common uh, rider saber and zen kaiger which is also meant to celebrate like two anniversaries at the same time i believe it's supposed to be like the 55th anniversary of common rider and the 50th anniversary or the 45th anniversary of uh zen kaiger oh or sorry i might have gotten that wrong i think it's the 50th anniversary of Common Rider in the 45th anniversary of uh, of uh, Super Sentai. Um, I'm not 100% sure, actually. I should have looked that up before I did this uh, intro. So my bad, everyone, for not knowing the exact uh, numbers. But either way, it's a really big event coming that I'm really looking forward to. And like I, and like I think uh, Adam and I have brought up before, as soon as the movie comes out, we're going to be reviewing the movie together since it's a crossover of the shows that we review. So it'll be really exciting to uh, kind of get more insight onto the Zenkaiger characters, whereas I can give uh, Adam some more insight onto the Kamen Rider Saber characters since I'm not sure if he's keeping up with the show or not. Uh, I'm definitely not keeping up with Zen Kaiger as much as I wish I was. Uh, unfortunately, the show, I think I mentioned this in my previous review, Zen Kaiger just hasn't really hit me that hard uh, in terms of its story and characters. Uh, I really wish I liked it more, but I just, I haven't been able to get into it, unfortunately. But I am really looking forward to the crossover film, so you can definitely look forward to that review coming to our channel as soon as uh, we're able to watch it. As far as I know, it's only really released in theaters currently so it might be a little while before we're able to find a copy of it but as soon as we can you can bet your ass the review will definitely be on the channel now that i have delayed this review long enough it's time to break this episode down talk about what i liked about it what i didn't like and uh <clears throat> what I look forward to in the season finale when it comes out next week. Uh, so to start out the episode, we, uh, you know, we get a new page kind of open up and essentially it kind of reveals the end of the world is pretty much coming. Now, uh, this, this cold open, much like previous episodes kind of starts with a mixture of two things, like one with a mixture of, uh, of, like uh, what happened on the previous episode, uh, kind of giving you guys like a refreshing, or refreshing your memory on it, and also some new events that are currently happening. And the way it's edited together, um, it makes it kind of come off like you're watching a movie trailer. And this isn't the first time that Common Rider Saber has done this. They tend to do this a lot with their cold opens. Uh, and I don't know, it's it's a it's an interesting uh, technique. Uh, but it's not my favorite, so I kind of hope that we don't see more of this in future Common Rider seasons. Uh, but you know, it it is kind of unique for the show, I'll say. So it's just it's an odd technique. Let me just put it that way. I, I feel like I've commented on this maybe a couple of times before, but I've never really gotten too into this. Uh, it is kind of a weird way that they'll edit their cold opens every once in a while. Uh, but with this all being said, the end of the world is coming, and the writers know it, and so they are getting prepped for what is going. To to be an epic battle between them and Storios. Um, we see around uh, the world that the barriers that the writers had put up are now breaking down and suddenly the uh, the book portal things are now like starting to uh, grow even faster and they're starting to become a lot more of them too. So now the writers know that things are really getting serious. They all uh, go up against uh, Storios and we see Storios, he uh, actually transforms into a new form, one where it's a common writer form for Storios, but it has the motif of his original original look so he still has kind of the horns and everything like that uh, I actually really like it it's very menacing and very cool for what I assume is meant to be kind of your final villain for uh, the season so I I really like this and uh, I, I definitely look forward to seeing what it's fully capable of in the next episode uh, something I was worried we were gonna get because we get all our uh, common writers transformed ready to fight Storios and uh, I've kind of made it clear on on the show uh, on my previous reviews I'm not really a big fan of of like uh, when you get multiple uh, people attacking one person because those type of fight scenes are really hard to, are really hard to uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, 
those type of scenes are really hard to uh, choreograph. So my worry was that it was just going to be kind of a really bad fight scene if they try to show all the writers trying to take down Storios and Storios just being uh, able to take them down with no problem at all. But thankfully, we don't get that. Uh, what actually happens instead is that Storios is able to resurrect the uh, four sages who were originally eradicated by Master Logos. Now, I don't remember if the four sages were brought up in the story earlier or in previous episodes, uh, but according to Ogami, they are no joke and uh, they, as we see when uh, they're fighting the common Riders, they, they are extremely skilled, not only in magic, but also just overall fighting skills. Like, they end up being a bit too much for the common Riders to handle. And I think because they all went into this battle expecting to only fight Storios, I think them having to fight multiple, uh, you know, villains, multiple people at once was definitely, you know, something that majorly threw off their game. And so, therefore, the Riders, they get their ass absolutely handed to them. And uh, what follows after this scene is kind of a real big calm before the storm because this is where it becomes an extremely character focused episode. Uh, the team regroups with the decision that at dawn that's when they are going to go and face off uh, you know Storios once and for all. Uh, that's where it's you know the final battle is going to take place. Uh, we have we have uh we have them uh, preparing by sharpening their blades, by having their uh, their blacksmiths uh, sharpen the blades for them, um, which something I got to point out, which is so silly about it, is the idea that the blades need to be sharpened, even though we look at them and they're clearly made of plastic and they clearly don't have sharp edges. It kind of makes me wonder like what they're meant to look like through the eyes of the characters like in the show. Like obviously like a lot of the, you know, special effects and props that we see as an audience aren't supposed to be diagenic to the show. So it makes me wonder how the blades look like in cotton in like the actual canon of the show i'm not sure if i'm explaining that well but uh you know it was uh, something that kind of made me chuckle inside you know when you have uh I, I i feel really bad i keep forgetting his name but the blacksmith of of the show uh, i want to say it's it's is it tetsudo i think um but when when he's like holding it and he, when he's holding these plastic swords he goes i'm going to sharpen these by dawn to uh tomorrow and i'm like that's really funny you can't sharpen plastic i mean technically you can but all you'll do is really damage it um but yeah we do have the writers then talking to any other writers that aren't there uh making sure they all know that the final battle is about to take place so we have rentaro going to the siblings letting them know that at dawn uh this is when they're going to face master logos and they're both they both look like they're absolutely ready and fired up ready to go uh for sure and then of course you got rentaro going to ren and ren uh you know seemingly not being interested but of course at the very end saying that yeah he's following his own path now he's not uh he's trying not to let like other he's trying not to make his decisions based on other people that he admires he wants to just be himself and luckily being himself means he wants to save the world so he is definitely going to be there for the final battle. Um, we then get Ogami with his family, and I, I didn't even realize, you know, like, obviously you knew that he had to have had, like, you know, a relationship with a woman of some sort because he has a kid, but, uh, or maybe he adopted the kid was my thought also earlier, but yeah, it was just funny because Ogami never mentioned having a wife before, and so it was really cool seeing her in this episode and seeing a very human side to Ogami that we do see in the show a lot, especially when he's around his son, but, uh, we never got to see him, like, uh, you know, with, with a wife and kid, though, so this was a... A really cool uh, moment for me in particular like I really loved uh, seeing him interacting with his wife and son and them having dinner together uh, just a really nice moment because you know that he's about to face like you know the most dangerous assignment you know the, that next morning so it's really cool that he that he has this really nice moment uh, with his family although that said I really hope it doesn't foreshadow anything really bad going to happen usually when you have like a really sweet moment like this it's always ruined because that character ends up dying later so so I really hope that doesn't happen. I really hope he makes it back to his family in the season finale. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, we then have a really nice scene with uh, Rintaro and uh, Mei with uh, Rintaro basically asking her to sit out this fight, uh, mostly because she never actually fights uh, whenever the common Riders go out. She just kind of is there observing. Uh, sometimes she's able to be helpful during the battles. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to call her useless. But for this particular battle with the uh, situation being as intense, 
intense as it is, Rintaro is asking her to just sit this one out, and then saying that he has something to tell her after the battle, and I think a lot of uh, fans of the show are really hoping that he's going to confess that he loves her or something like that. Personally, that's what I think he's about to do, because I think the two of them just have had really good chemistry this season, and uh, I think Rintaro, you know, I, I think Rintaro and Mae would just make an amazing couple together, so personally, I definitely ship it, and we'll see next week if uh, that's what happens. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen, though, unless they decide once again, you know, while we're on the topic of killing off characters, they decide to kill off Rintaro right when he uh, confesses his love for her, which I hope doesn't happen, um, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see, definitely. Uh, we then uh, cut to Luna, who, uh, who runs into Toma and Kento, and um, you know, I thought this scene was, uh, was kind of interesting because it starts out with, with her as a kid and the two of them as adults, like we've seen kind of throughout the series, you know, giving me kind of the assumption that maybe when you're in the Wonder Ride world, your body just like doesn't age. And maybe that's why she stayed a kid this whole time. Uh, but then we get like a really weird, weird moment where she's like too afraid to really, uh, confront Toma due to the big decision that Toma's going to have to make. And, uh, she's, a, she doesn't want to, to me, it feels like she doesn't want to pressure Toma into making a decision that he would later on regret. So that's why she's about to run away. But then Toma and Kento kind of start putting on the show for her, uh, kind of like what they used to do as kids when they used to uh, re reenact uh, different scenarios from different books. And so the two of them are doing this and it makes her laugh. And suddenly we get this really cool transition where through her eyes, we see uh, all three of them as children again. But then as the camera passes the tree, we get like a really cool transition shot where suddenly like all of them including Luna herself, are now adults, and uh, we get some really sweet interactions between the three of them. It's really cool seeing Luna, like, actually, you know, the same age as everyone else now, because, uh, uh, I don't know, it was just, not not saying it was bad, it was just kind of weird having her as a kid, but, like, having uh, her friendship with Toma still being kind of uh, treated the same, uh, it felt, like, kind of awkward, is, is all I'm saying. So it is kind of a lot easier for me to digest this now that she's an adult, and, you know, Know, the, it makes kind of the friendship between the two of them now that they're the same age feel a lot more, uh, you know, easier to wrap your head around, if that makes sense. So I definitely thought this scene was incredibly sweet when she talks about, you know, the big decision that Toma has to make. And Toma doesn't seem worried because he knows that everyone chooses their own destiny. There was like even a moment where she was like uh, sad that she wasn't human. And Toma kind of just says, you are who you are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, definitely some really sweet interactions, but it's here that, uh, that, um, Storios raises his giant army and the team knows that, you know, the time's up and that they all have to gather together in order to face this, uh, final battle. And what we get is a completely, like, totally epic shot to end this, uh, you know, episode on. Originally, for my thumbnail for this episode, I was gonna kind of crop together maybe a couple of images like I had been a couple of times, but for this one, I didn't want to just because I thought the shot was so beautiful. I'm like, nope, this is going to be the thumbnail. I don't want to like add anything else to ruin it. This is just such a beautiful moment with all of them gathered together. Um, so yeah, it was overall a really cool, uh, calm before the storm. Like I said, uh, for the penultimate episode. And as we build up to our season finale next week, I'm definitely extremely hyped to see how this all concludes, uh, in this final battle. And I've definitely overall, you know, I, I, I think it's really funny looking back on my earlier reviews for this show because, uh, you, you know, when the show started, I just thought it was kind of a silly, fun adventure. It wasn't really my favorite. Uh, I definitely thought it was a huge step down compared to Common Rider Zero One. And then uh, it had, you had like this weird period of time where, uh, to me anyways, it felt like the show didn't know where, where it wanted to go or what it wanted to be. So it felt like the formula kept changing and it just, to me, it didn't work. But then you got to this certain point where suddenly it felt like things were, uh, really building up to each other for a reason where episodes were actually made the way they were for a particular reason. And it, it kind of leads me to the conclusion that the show just, I feel like the show needs to be binged, uh, which is why I'm almost kind of considering rewatching the entire series once the the season finale uh, comes in. I feel like this is a show that's a lot better when you know what the outcome is going to be. So I'm kind of curious to see if that uh, that idea I have of it 
holds up with the season finale and if i were to binge this how i would uh if i would appreciate the earlier episodes of the show more or if maybe i wouldn't like it as much because then i feel like maybe it would take too long to get to the good episodes i'm not sure all i know is that i definitely want to rewatch this series at some point and find out if that's true or not uh but guys overall once again really good penultimate episode uh this show has been doing so good these last like 20 or 30 episodes or so and i'm really excited to see how it all concludes next week in our season finale but of course guys at the end of the day these are just my a plus opinions we here at a plus opinions always want to know what you guys think so definitely let me know your thoughts in the of the episode in the comments below don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to our channel but guys above all just remember to keep it a plus i'll talk to you all next week